Welcome to Mama Movies, today we are gonna talk about an adventure, fun and comedy movie. Film from 1994, named Baby's Day Out. Bennington Austin Cotwell IV, better known as Bink, is the child of Lorraine and Bennington Austin. Cotwell three two or three socialites that live in a chateau in a suburb of Chicago. The individual that invests the most energy with him and really realizes him well in any case is his babysitter Gilbertine, an exceptionally mindful woman that will peruse him his cherished book, Child's Outing, or as Bink calls it, boo-boo over and over regardless of whether she's burnt out on it. Today, Bink is getting his image taken so he can show up in the social pages of the paper since Lorraine has been feeling they've kept their child stowed away from their companions. While the mother and babysitter get the child ready, the photographic artists are all set also, be that as it may, they experience an issue when a triplet of lawbreakers snare them. Eddie, Vico, and Norby get. The genuine picture takers tie them up and leave them in an old deserted distribution center prior to taking their outfits and their van with the goal that they can pretend to be them. At the point when they show up at the chateau, their act is accepted without any issues, so they accept out their hardware as though they plan to take the picture without a doubt and ask the mother for some time alone with the youngster, since, in such a case that she's there, she may divert him. Lorraine looks a piece skeptical, yet Eddie gets her to leave when he calls attention to. Her outfit isn't satisfactory for the photograph. The workers leave with her to assist her with finding the right dress, yet prior to doing as such, Gilbertine gives Eddie the book on the off chance that Bink gets troublesome. With everybody out of the picture, it's inconceivably simple for the crooks to take the child and break through the window where their van has, as of now, been parked. They change vehicles halfway however, leaving their camouflages with the photographic artist's outfits and gear behind in return for their own van. Lorraine observes a note left behind telling her not to call the police and Bennington returns from work in the wake of getting a note requesting cash as well. The cops and the FBI before long show up at the house and start their examination, stopping Lorraine without a moment to spare from going out there and looking for the child all alone, which could be risky. In the meantime, the hoodlums are in their secret safe house, the last floor condo of a tall structure with a tremendous clock on the front. In the wake of changing Bink into less flashy garments, so it's not possible for anyone to tell he's a rich child, Norby takes him to the room and peruses the book to him, attempting to make him sleep. However, he is the one that nods off all things being equal. Bink glances through the book all alone and takes note. There are birds outside the window very much like the ones in the story, so he slithers out and utilizes the emergency exit to move to the rooftop later the birds. When he observes a lookout window, he glances through it and sees Eddie and Vico in the room, acquiring their consideration when he spits on them and chuckles. The crooks alarm and follow him, just to find him slithering on a wooden board to arrive at the other rooftop, where the bird has traveled to. Eddie comes closer to get him and winds up being hit by the board. At the point when the shift of Bink's weight makes it drop up and down, and considering it to be perilous, Vico tosses. The board away later Bink makes it to the other side, killing the opportunity for them to follow him through a similar way. The threesome chooses that the rooftops are adequately close to one another to bounce. Norby and Vico figure out how to get over, yet Eddie is as yet unsteady and falls on a backstreet dumpster. In the interim, Bink advances inside the building, arriving at the loft and figuring out how to leave it. At the point when the proprietor makes the way for the mailman, they're too bustling conversing with one another to take note. Him creeping around their feet until he reaches the lift, which he rides to the ground floor. Before at long last leaving the structure. Norby and Vico salvage Eddie out of the garbage bin simply in. Time to see Bink get on a jam-packed blue transport because it matches the one in the book, so they rush to. Get into their van and chase after him town. The transport driver sees them and drives from them losing them for a few squares until the trio figures out how to track down a way back into the Central Avenue. Halting the van directly before the transport, when it stops to let a major woman out, who conveys a pack. Where Bink has crept into. Norby converses with the driver and gets some information about the child, yet the driver. Simply takes off. While he calls the primary office to check whether there are any reports of a missing child, the threesome sees the large woman stroll behind their van, and notice Bink serenely sitting in her pack. They begin following her, attempting to consider a method for taking Bink without her knowing, however she does. Notice them and continues to drop her things in request to whip them. 
Terrified of her solidarity, the crooks flee while Bink removes the possibility to slither from the sack and enter a retail chain. There, he's found by the representative accountable for the shopping center's childcare, who thinks Bink has gotten away from her offices. She takes him with her and leaves him with different children subsequent to changing his diaper, yet. Bink escapes again by moving into another baby's carriage when the mother comes to get her. In the wake of drinking all the juice from the other child's jug, Bink hangs tight for the buggy. To pause and moves back out, advancing to the entryways and trusting that a grown-up will open them. So he can head outside. In the city, a reporter is as of now covering his capturing on the news. Furthermore he creeps past her when he sees a taxi, which additionally helps him to remember his book. He causes the columnist to drop her amplifier and the cameras are on him briefly, enough for the hoodlums to see him on a shop's TV. They surge later him, yet they don't make it on schedule. Bink slithers into the taxi and checks out them through the window as the vehicle drives away. Meanwhile, the Cotwells get a call from a man professing to have seen the child and go look at it. The man focuses it and condo subsequent to getting some cash out of them. Taxi parks to drop off its travelers, Bink creeps out and sees the zoo across the road, which additionally is in his book. The lawbreakers arrive then, at that point, having followed the taxi with their van, furthermore see him go across the road with no issues. They attempt to do likewise, yet it's more troublesome. For three developed men to be overlooked by the cars, so a vehicle winds up rolling over their toes, making them flee in agony and fall into a ditch. Later they get out, they enter the zoo and follow Bink's tracks on the soil that take them to the primate house, where Bink is cheerily sitting. Inside an enclosure with a gorilla. This gorilla likes the child and treats him as though he were its own, taking care of him leafy foods him safe. It isn't as pleasant in any case when Vico puts his arm inside. Norby sticks its handle inside the enclosure and puts it through Bink's garments to get him, be that as it may, the gorilla rapidly notification and takes Bink back prior to hitting Norby with the mop. Subsequently, they trust that the primate will not off, and now it's Eddie's chance to attempt to get the child out. From the beginning, it appears to be he's effectively bringing Bink closer, yet the gorilla awakens, snatches Eddie, what's more irately throws him against another cage subsequent to thundering all over. At that point, the Zoo opens the rear of the gorilla's enclosure, so it can be in the external region for some time, giving Bink the freedom to securely get away. While the Cotwells observe Bink's image on the paper, however not in the way they needed, Bink hangs out in the park, observing the wide range of various children play, and have a good time. He begins slithering ceaselessly again when the criminals show up in their van and begin following him. Practically getting him, before he goes through some shrubs and a passage three developed men can't walk into. The threesome hurries to the opposite side park and sits tight for him to emerge from the passage at the opposite end, getting him just before the police show up. Playing the blameless observer card, they sit on a close-by seat and hide Bink between Eddie's legs, covering him with his coat. The cops start asking inquiries concerning their van and a missing child, also Eddie makes an honest effort to answer them while wriggling in torment, in light of the fact that Bink is hitting his crotch and in any event, lighting it ablaze later he observes a lighter in one of Eddie's pockets. Norby and Vico remove the cops with them to show them something about the van while Bink leaves the lighter on the seat and climbs down from Eddie's lap, who can't prevent him from getting away in light of the fact that he's going through excruciating torment. At the point when his two companions return, they toss him on the ground and put off the fire by stomping over and again on his crotch. Back in the house, Lorraine approaches Gilbertine, acknowledging she's the one in particular that can see how she feels. While they bond over their affection for the child, Bink is advancing toward a building site, followed intently by Vico. Bink sees a laborer's donut and needs it for himself, so he hops on a steel bar. To get it, not thinking often about the reality he's now being lifted with the bar to the most noteworthy floor of the structure. Eddie and Norby join Vico then, at that point, and together them three ride the lift until they arrive at a space the shaft hasn't passed by yet. The thought is to bounce on it and recover the child. Bar, his weight makes it tip down and bink, to slide off until he arrives on the lift rooftop. As he creeps inside the structure, Eddie and Norby attempt to help Vico, who is going to lose his hold. On. Please subscribe for further updates.